everyone, my name is The Flower Girl, but you can call me Demi, and welcome back to another After Talk video. So, you might already know this, I've got glasses, these are blue filter glasses, I got them today, the day that you are watching this video, um, as well as the day I'm um, that I'm recording this. Um, uh, yeah, this is a blue filter, these are blue filter glasses, look at the design, just look at it, so beautiful. And you can tell it's blue with like all blue filter because it has all like blue things. I got them today and I love them. I love the design. Um, and yeah, we are back here for an after talk video. Um, you guys will only see these glasses on video, uh, not in the vlogs. Or sometimes when I'm like editing videos or when I'm live in the vlog or um, when I'm on my laptop during the vlog. So yeah, we get, we're here back for another after talk. Today, it is MotoGP Le Mans. And um, it was crazy. Um, what if Moto3 was crazy? I mean, lo lots of crashes, I get it, but it was crazy. It was crazy. So we're gonna start off with Moto3, as always, um, in Europe, except for in the UK, because then it's Moto3, MotoGP, Moto2. That's how it goes there. <laughs> it's Normally it's always Moto3, uh, Moto Moto2, MotoGP, but sometimes it goes different. Like in um, in Austin, it was Moto2, MotoGP, Moto3 because of the time difference. And more people want to watch MotoGP than Moto3 because Moto3 is like a class that, no, that almost no one watches. And I'm probably one of the few who watch it. It's mostly the fam. Uh, I think it's mostly the family of those people or people who are really interested in this. And I am really interested in Moto Three. Um, but yeah, let's go. So, in the Moto Three, the winner was Yama Masia after a massive battle with like a lot people like he how messia um, along with a few others he's very late on the brakes he's very aggressive breaker but that did work into his advantage um yeah he may not have the best straight line speed but he is good at breaking very very late so um yeah that's an advantage you have after a straight where you have to break very hard you, you can just like zoom past them and be very aggressive on the brakes. Um, second on the podium was Ayumu Sasaki. It had a bit of a look that he was going to win. It's like um, the time difference was, well, the difference in time uh, as in as uh, they were finishing. It was zero point one five zero seconds difference but they had the same speed i don't get it um second uh, third on the podium was i was eisen guevara um there were a few crashes um only few crashes were scott ogden and xavier atigas um those were the only crashes um yeah only, don't do only crashes that were there. Um, this time, uh, John McPhee, he's he was he's back. He's returned. Um, uh, I think he had some sort of um, like injury uh, of some kind, where he just didn't, where he just couldn't race for a few races. But he's back. Um, well, Dennis Foggia, fourth. I mean, it's way better than Hereth, where he was outside the points. But, you know, this is not where it gets crazy, okay? This part is not crazy. The results there are just, you know, normal. But you know what is crazy? They said that it was going to rain in Le Mans, at, in La Sarte, which is where the track is, in France. It was gonna rain at 2 p.m. local time, and that's many the time when MotoGP starts to race. But 
Murder 3 starts at 10 uh, at 11 p.m. local time, which is one hour ahead of the UK, if I'm getting this straight. The rain fell on lap one. Um, there were four people who crashed in the last corner. Um, it was Isaac Guevara, uh, Sergio Garcia, and two more. I believe Ricciardo Rossi as well. Uh, and then the next lap, Daniel Holgado crashed. Um, and then the next lap, they caught the red flag. So, yeah, it was too, too wet to uh, get slick, uh, to get uh, out on slicks. They waited for like about five, till ten, uh, five to ten minutes and the rain was gone. And the track was dried, sun was coming out, and they were ready to go again to finish the race. Or to get the race going, essentially. Um, but yeah, that was a crazy bit. And I was still hoping for rain uh, in the Moto2, but it didn't. Um, then he's on true. Mm, no. He, he got ninth. Still no victory. One day. One day, I will stand here and I will be so happy because Dennis on true have won the race. Unless it's to, it's on the same weekend when there's a Formula 1 race where either Lando or Carlos would have won. Huh. Yeah. Either one. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, what else? Uh, Diogo Moreira. Yeah, a massive launch. At, uh, before the red flag was called, he was P1. He was P1. Like, a rookie. P1. Um, I am still going to nickname the Ayrton Senna of Moto3. I am going to nickname him that, and no one can change it. That's his nickname from now on. But, um, yeah. Unfortunately, um... Well, the, the red flag was called, everyone would be would be starting from their original grid position. Uh, one person actually didn't start the race, and that was a teammate of Kaito Toba. If you remember, last time out in Jerez, uh, Jerez I showed you um, a clip of someone crashing um, because they got collected by another driver's bike. Yeah, um, it's that guy who did not race today. He... Um, he has too much injuries, too much pain, and he just withdraw himself. And that was um, Kelso. By yeah, it's Kelso. Um, but yeah, that is that. But yeah, hopefully next race you'll be there, which is in Mugello. Um, it's gonna be a lot of emotions in Mugello for like some of the mem some of the family members, some of the. Yeah, some, for some of the drivers, because uh, last year in Mugello, someone actually died in the Moto3. Very unfortunate. Um, I'm not going to show the, the the clip of the accident out of respect. Um, but yeah, he that, that guy who died, he had so much potential and it was so unfortunate for him. But yeah. He will be with us forever. But yeah. To the Moto2, I was on the edge of my seat for the Moto2 race. I was on my e on the edge of the seat. And you want to know why? Well, um, they put him here as DNF. And that's because he crashed from the lead. And it's actually my fa one of my favourite drivers in the Moto2. I just want him to get a win. He had been off pace whole season. And then they go to Lamar. Free practice three. He's on the top. FP2, he's in he's in the top three. Qualifying. Qualifies in pole position. And leads the race from the start. But then number 50 51 crashes. Of I'm of course talking about Pedro Acosta. So unfortunate that he didn't even finish the race. Um that he didn't even got uh, he didn't even win um 
few other DNFs are Nicolo Antonelli, Tony Abolino, Fermin Ardugue, Alonso Lopez, they actually crashed together, Gabriele Rodrigo, unfortunate, I mentioned earlier, Pedro Costa, Marcos Ramirez and Barry Baltes at the very last second. Um, both the riders of R RW Racing or NTS, they were very disappointed. Um, yeah, even though Zonta van der Goerberg got his best result so far, which is P17, his previous best result was P18, so um, he did quite well. Um, one guy uh, here also withdraw himself, and that was Mr. Sam Lewis. Or is Alex? No, Alex is in... I always get confused because they're, they're identical twins. Um, yeah, Alex Lewis is in thing and Sam Lewis is in this. Um, so Sam Lewis actually withdrew himself. Uh, he had uh, a, quite a horror crash on um on saturday morning i believe so he withdraw himself from the race um now he has time to like relax get his injuries to settle down um so yeah <clears throat> the winner was the teammate of pedro acosta augusto fernandez and fernandez was already on the back of Acosta the whole race they would both of the the KTMs were leading the race and they're driving with Kale with the Kale Kalex Kalex thing yeah <laughs> um, the second is Aaron Kinnett after a battle with Sonkia Chantra and Cameron Balbier it seemed to be that Ayogura and Marcel Schrocher were gonna get to there, but they didn't. Uh, so, yeah. Sonkia Chantra was in P3. Cameron, Cameron Balbier actually finished the race with a good result, P4. Marcel Schrocher, it is always for him that whenever he's doing good, he would crash or something would happen to him that he couldn't finish the race. Well, actually, this time he finished the race in P6, so that's some good handful of points. Uh, Celestino Fiatti, not a lot of luck. I mean, he's, he, he, he had been off the pace. I mean, there were, there were times where this race, where he, where he was behind Bo Ben Schneider. So yeah. Um, Bo Ben Schneider actually got two points, um, this race. It's not much, but hey, you gotta live with it. Besides, he's now in the top 10 of the world championship so for me even if he didn't even get a point but all the guys who were in, ahead of him in the championship uh, they did not finish then yeah of course you gotta be happy I mean you 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 got you got your top 10 in the world championship standings I mean that's crazy and I was like if he gets a good result he'll be there but no he all he needed was just a handful of points and not have Sam Lewis finish the race or not even have him drive race. I'm sorry, I was speaking very fast there. <laughs> um, last point went to Philip Salach. Um, he did quite well. Um, there were a bit. Uh, there was something with Albert Aronas and Boben Schneider during FP2, which I saw live. Um, basically, it was like a few seconds to go, like um, 45 seconds. And Albert Aronas went out on track and he got in the way of Boben Schneider and Boben Schneider basically gave a sar sarcastic thumbs up uh, at, at the finish line because uh, he ruined his lap. Um, and this is the point where I am thinking, you know what, maybe make a rule that no one is allowed to go out in the last two minutes to prevent this from happening again i mean even in the motor gp like in every class um or you could just have the good mind of thinking okay right we've got 60 seconds left on the clock let's not go out we'll just 
wait until the timer is gone and we'll do a practice start tomorrow. Or you could have just gone out earlier. I mean, where, where were you with your brain? I'm sorry. Um, last one, Jake Dixon, he also crashed. Albert Arnas crashed. Um, Sean Dillon actually also crashed, I believe. Yeah, they, um, so actually um, 18 drivers did not crash. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's unfortunate. I'm still a bit of upset that Albert Arnas ruined Bob Ben Schneider's fast lap. Now we're going to go to the MotoGP. And man, I keep saying it. Alej Spargo is very consistent. I mean, it's the fourth race in a row that he got on the third step of the podium. I mean, how are you doing that with a bike that isn't even as fast as the bike of Jack Miller? I mean, for, technically speaking, Espargaro is on an Aproya and Jack is on a Ducati, so there is quite a lot of difference. But he kept Fabio Quattararo behind him the whole freaking time. Like, how? How did you do that? Um, there were quite a few crashes. Um, we had Remy Gardner who was the first to crash. Alex Rins, I think he went to the medical center after the race because um, he forgot to brake um, for first kink to the right. Uh, went through the gravel trap, made a weird movement with his, with his uh, steering and then slammed his head on the tarmac. He stood up, luckily. <laughs> That's the good thing. Um, uh, Tech 3 K uh, KTM didn't have a good race as Raul Fernandez also crashed. Suzuki weren't also having the best race because Juan Mir also crashed. Suzuki is not awake. And here is why. Suzuki uh, is going to withdraw at the end of the MotoGP 2022 season. So after... Valencia this year, which is um, November the 4th till November the 6th, they're going to they're gonna withdraw from the MotoGP. They're, they're no longer there. Um, there were some specula speculations, but they are finally out. So um, now it's just a question where Alex Rins is going to go. And where is Juan Mir going to go? What's going to happen to their crew? We are still awaiting those answers, but carrying on with those who DNF'd. Hoy Martin, um, he did not, he, he, I don't know what's wrong with this, but I don't know what's up with him. He is not, he, the first two races of the season he crashed and he, he's just not on points. I mean, last year he was winning races and now he's just, Spending the rest of his time in the gravel traps. What is wrong? Francisco Banaya also crashed. Um, he took the lead from Jack Miller and in the penultimate last corner, he crashed out of the race. Um, yeah, after a victory in Spain, it is uh, not good luck for him. And then the last one who crashed is Miguel Oliveira. Um, so, yeah, the only KTM still standing was the one of Red Binder, which sustained damage. He lost one of his wings in a chaotic start, um, which was like turn six or something. I can't remember. Yeah, it was turn six. I don't know the corner names of Lamar. I mean, they call the chicane turn one and turn two, but... To me, it's turn three and t uh, it's turn two and uh, and three, because like a small kink is also a corner, it's also a turn, right? But yeah. Anyway, um, Andre Dovichoso, uh and Darren Binder didn't get into the points. Franco Morbidelli with the last point, Alex Marquez in fourteen, Fabio Gigi Antonio on thirteen. He finally finished the race. Thank God. Um, Marco Busecki on the 12th spot, great job. Paul Espargaro, 11th, 10th, Maverick Finales. Good to know that he is also there. He is not, like, 
I'm not gonna finish this race, but he is gonna finish the race, luckily. In the top 10, Luca Marini, I'm waiting for a podium for him. Uh, in 9th, Brad Binder with sustained damage. In 7th, Takaki Nakagami. 7th, uh, 6th, Mark Marquez. 5th, Johan Zarco with having grid penalties for um, impeding someone's lap time or um, like getting into the way. That's, that's what it is. In 4th, Fabio Quattraro. And then Alexis Parker on three, on two, Jack Miller, and on one, the only one who's got the uh, who's got the three victories in the MotoGP this season, Enea Bastianini. Enea Bastianini won in Qatar and in the United States. And I'm not quite. Co I'm I'm getting confident to call to be calling him out to be the next world champion but as of right now um i believe quattro is still leading yeah quattro is still leading so yeah still leading yeah that's good that's good yeah well let's go and look at the standings uh of the motor three because we've got some time if it wants to load <laughs> So, Sergio Garcia is, um, is still leading the championship with 112 points. Um, Dennis Foggia is coming. He is currently tied with Hyama Masia with, uh, with 95 points. Um, then we have... Um, well, who are the surprises? Um, not really. Moto two. Of course, Bob Ben Schneider will be in, will be standing here in the top ten. Of course, uh, he will be standing tenth. So that is all good. Celestino Fietti is leading the championship. Um, Bo is ahead of Sam Lewis, who didn't even finish the last four races. That is sad. We didn't even get he didn't get into the points. That could also be it. Um. Pedro Costa also didn't finish the last. He didn't get into the points in the last four races. Wait, one, two, three, four. Yeah, four. <laughs> um, Zonta still waiting his uh, first points. Um, but yeah, that will be coming quite soon. But for now, that is it for this. Um, if uh, as soon as this video is uploaded i will be live over on twitch the link is in the description down below you go there and wait for me to go live uh i will probably be live by then but that's it from me for now thank you all very much for watching i hope you enjoy my glasses you're going to be seeing them in every kind of video that i'm doing here uh just in my room that has to do with like screens and stuff um but yeah like the video subscribe if you're new and i shall see you guys later today when i go live over on twitch which is twitch.tv newflowergirl58 but yeah bye guys